Of all the Doctor's foes, none conjure up such terror among hardcore fans as the dreaded Retcon. But Retcon isn't an alien or a moustache twirling villain, it's a narrative device. Retcon stands for Retroactive Continuity, and it essentially describes moments that change or contradict established canon. It's such an infamous staple of Doctor Who that spin off show Torture had named a mind erasing drug Retcon in its honour. Not all Retcons are necessarily bad, sometimes they're important for opening up new storytelling opportunities or making something feasible that wouldn't be otherwise. But they can also cause confusion, nullify some of the show's best episodes and characters, and create unfortunate missed opportunities. However, retcons are also somewhat inevitable. When dealing with a show that's spanned over 50 years, has a heavy focus on time travel and has been headed by numerous different production teams, it would be crazy to expect completely robust continuity. Still, not having the continuity morph into something completely different every few years would be nice. My name is Patch, welcome to Who Culture, let's look at the 10 biggest Doctor Who retcons. Number 10. The New Paradigm Daleks Early Matt Smith's story, Victory of the Daleks, infamously introduced a brand new Dalek design in an effort to breathe new life into the iconic baddies and sell more toys. The sleek bronze designs, which have been in use since 2005, were set to be replaced with brightly coloured behemoths, each with a different rank and function. These were the new Dalek paradigm, and the story set them up to be the face of the Daleks for the foreseeable future, a point hammered home when the shiny new variants exterminate their apparently inferior predecessors and escape the Doctor's justice at the end of the episode. Embarrassingly, however, the new design was so derided by fans that it was swept under the rug by the very next series and never seen properly again. You can occasionally glimpse them in background cameos with their paint jobs toned down, but by and large, the bronze Daleks fans had grown to love were put firmly back in place as the supreme design, with no explanation for what happened to the new paradigm. It's a shame too, these Daleks never got to prove themselves, and it would have been interesting to see what devious plans Moffat had in mind for them. No second chances, we're that sort of a fandom. Number 9. Clara's Fractures Poor Clara. For the majority of her time alongside the 11th Doctor, she's no more than a walking plot device. More focus is put on the mystery behind her recurring appearances at different points in time than on her actual character. With so much build-up, there needed to be a satisfying payoff, and while the answer to this mystery was a clever one, it was also a pretty big retcon. Clara stepped into the Doctor's time stream in an effort to save him from the Great Intelligence, scattering versions of herself across his timeline. With some smart reuse of archival footage, Clara appears to cross paths with many of the Doctor's past incarnations in familiar episodes. The Tenth Doctor in Silence in the Library, the Seventh Doctor in Dragonfire, the Fifth Doctor in Ark of Infinity, effectively retconning these stories so that Clara was always present in them, we just never saw her. Most egregiously, however, we see Clara converse with the First Doctor himself, just as he is about to steal a TARDIS and leave Gallifrey behind. Clara calls out to the Doctor and persuades him to take his specific TARDIS, thereby ensuring that he ends up with the notoriously unreliable timeship we all know and love. This retcon attempts to amplify Clara's importance to the mythos by implying that, without her, Doctor Who as we know it would never have existed. Number 8. Nobody remembers that aliens exist. Ever wondered why everyone in Doctor Who is always really shocked to discover that aliens actually exist, despite the fact that Earth has been invaded countless times? The answer lies in Series 5's story arc, and it's essentially one giant retcon. The cracks in time and space, which recur throughout Matt Smith's first series as the Doctor, have a dangerous tendency to erase things from existence, meaning nobody can remember them, aside from the Doctor being clever and all. It happened to Rory during his encounter with the Silurians, and apparently it happened to many key events from the previous four series as well. This is first revealed when the Doctor realises Amy doesn't recognise the Daleks despite them invading her home planet at least twice in recent years. The Doctor also realises that there is no mention of the Cyber King stomping all over Victorian London in history books. Another event that, apparently, disappeared down the continuity wormhole. For all intents and purposes then, these events never happened. It's a pretty smart way of giving the new series a clean slate, but it also means the carefully crafted world building of Russell T Davies' tenure feels a little inconsequential, which is a huge shame. Number 7. The Reapers the fantastic Ninth Doctor story, Father's Day, introduced us to fearsome bat-like creatures known as the Reapers. The Doctor tells us that these winged monstrosities are summoned every time a paradox is created, to seal up the wound and put time back on track. In this case, they appeared as a result of Rose going back to the past to prevent her father's death. Despite the Doctor's insistence that the Reapers are an ever-present threat, Father's Day is the only time they appear. As soon as the episode is over, they never materialise again. They're not even mentioned once. 
Think how many paradoxes have occurred in Doctor Who that the Reapers should have intercepted. During the Moffat era, they should have popped up pretty much every episode. What could and should have been a recurring enemy that demonstrated the dangers of time travel were instead relegated to a simple monster of the week, forgotten by writers and fans alike. As the show began to focus on time travel more and more as a storytelling device, the Reapers were silently retconned out of existence, making one of the Ninth Doctor's best stories feel somewhat out of sync with the rest of the show. Number 6. Missy's Redemption Reversed During the Twelfth Doctor's tenure, we were introduced to Missy, the first female incarnation of iconic archenemy the Master. Missy was a fan favourite thanks to Michelle Gomez's delightfully loopy portrayal and Stephen Moffat's clever writing. More morally ambiguous than many of her predecessors, Missy underwent a unique character arc as she attempted to become good and redeem herself of her past misdeeds. This culminated in the sublime Series 10 finale The Doctor Falls, as Missy and her previous incarnation, played by John Sim, faced off, killing one another in the process. This seemed like the perfect ending for the character of the Master as a whole as they revolted against the embodiment of their own troubled past. Just over a dozen episodes later, however, the Master returns in the form of Sasha Dewan and he's as evil as ever. It's as if Missy's redemption never happened. Arguably, the Master defaulting back to his wicked ways was inevitable, but this feels way too soon, and especially for fans of Missy it's an upsetting retcon. It would be better if Missy's attempts to change her ways were acknowledged at all by the Doctor or the Master. Just a single mention of Missy would have been enough to establish a sense of continuity, but as it stands, her excellent character arc seems to have been entirely forgotten. Number 5. The War Doctor Series 7's finale, The Name of the Doctor, ended on a shock cliffhanger that not only went on to form a crucial part of the 50th anniversary special, but changed Doctor Who canon as we knew it forever. Having jumped into his time stream to rescue Clara, the 11th Doctor discovers a memory he had suppressed for centuries, kept secret out of fear and regret. As it turns out, the Doctor underwent a secret regeneration between his 8th and 9th incarnations. This hidden incarnation is known as the War Doctor, played sublimely by the late John Hurt. The War Doctor is so called because he's the one who's got his hands dirty in the Time War. But hang on, wasn't it very strongly implied that it was the 9th Doctor who fought in the Time War? Isn't that where his rueful, anguished character comes from? Not only does the addition of the War Doctor retroactively mess with the 9th Doctor's character arc, it also messes up the numbering of the Doctor's incarnations. Next time someone asks you to count 10, throw a cheeky war in there between the 8 and 9 and see how they react. That's how jarring it was back in the day. We thought Matt Smith was the 11th Doctor, but actually he's technically the 13th, when you include the Metacrisis Doctor regeneration. This is one retcon so big it required fans to take a day off and recalibrate. Number 4. The Doctor is Half Human as his foes love to mock him for, the Doctor has always had a certain affinity for us humans. But in a bizarre turn of events in the 1998 TV movie starring Paul McGann, the Doctor's connection to humanity was revealed to run deeper than we thought. Contrary to what we were led to believe for the entire duration of the show up to this point, the Doctor is apparently not an alien after all. At least not entirely. In an attempt to distract a party guest while stealing their security pass, the Doctor blurts out a pretty big secret. I'm half human. On my mother's side. This is such an appalling retcon that it almost comes across as a joke. But the Master confirms it to be true in the very same film. The reveal comes completely out of nowhere, and it's incredibly jarring since it contradicts everything we know. It's almost like the filmmakers didn't even watch the show, or perhaps they confused the Doctor with Mr. Spock. It's a relief, then, that this baffling bombshell is never mentioned again. A retcon of a retcon. Only Doctor Who could be so cavalier with its continuity. Number 3. The First Doctor is not the First Doctor For the first 57 years of Doctor Who's existence, William Hartnell's incarnation of the Time Lord was known to be the very first version of the Doctor. The original, you might say. But no more. As of Series 12's finale, The Timeless Children, Hartnell no longer has the honour of being the first face the Doctor wore, since it was revealed that the Doctor had already regenerated dozens if not hundreds of times prior. This does feel a little disrespectful to Hartnell, the man who brought the beloved role to life way back in 1963. Not only that, but his character and quirks are based on the fact that he is the initial incarnation. His growth from nonchalant grump into the very essence of the Doctor we know and love is the crucial foundation for the series, and this retcon makes all that redundant. Some have argued that this is a positive change that opens up new storytelling possibilities. But was there really a limit on storytelling possibilities before the change? Doctor Who is inherently unlimited. It can go anywhere in time and space, adapt itself to suit any genre, and change its cast whenever necessary. Introducing dozens of upon dozens of Doctors we didn't know about before is just overwhelming, and it dilutes the character by making the incarnations we know feel comparatively insignificant. Number 2. The Doctor Didn't Destroy Gallifrey 
The 50th anniversary special, The Day of the Doctor, is an absolute treat for fans, an unbridled cheer of an episode in celebration of five decades of our favourite show in all of time and space. But it's also, at its core, a giant retcon that undoes years of character development. Much of the Doctor's character arc since the 2005 revival was based on one key fact. The Doctor destroyed Gallifrey, ending the Time War by wiping out every living being on the planet, Daleks and Time Lords alike. The Ninth Doctor in particular is defined by this event. He is only the person he is because of it. If it never happened, he would be a completely different character. But the Day of the Doctor says exactly that. It never happened. The Doctors all worked together to suspend Gallifrey in temporal stasis, saving it from being destroyed. As much as this was indeed a triumphant moment that was important for the future of the show, it also undid much of what had been previously established, and undermined a crucial aspect of the Doctor's character, his moral ambiguity. With the Doctor no longer responsible for the destruction of his home planet, he was a fundamentally less complex, less nuanced, less compelling character. Number 1. The Doctor is the origin of the Time Lords. In the catastrophically controversial Series 12 finale The Timeless Children, everything we thought we knew about the Doctor was retconned to the extreme, as she was revealed to be the origin of the Time Lords. Found as a child on a desolate planet by a Gallifreyan scientist, the Doctor was taken and experimented on in order to implant her unique ability to regenerate into Gallifreyan citadel dwellers. This retcon undermines the Doctor's entire raison d'etre. The fact that the Doctor was just an ordinary Gallifreyan who revolted against authority and ran away from their people was a perfect encapsulation of their character. The Doctor fashioned themselves into who they are, moulded their own identity, walked their own path. An unwitting hero, an underdog, or so we thought. But apparently, they were born special, their fate predestined. The emphasis has shifted from what they have done to what they are. The Doctor is no longer defined by their actions, but by their backstory. Showrunner Chris Chibnall had better have something special up his sleeve for next series if he wants to convince us that this radical retcon was the right move. And there you go, the 10 biggest Doctor Who retcons. Did I miss any? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, I've been Patch for Who Culture. Take care, and I'll see you next time.